So hello everyone, it's so nice to see you all. Thank you again for being here for our virtual orientation event. As I said, my name is Jennifer Abraham and I'm the graduate intern of New Student Transition Programs here at Seen Hill University. I will be working with you throughout virtual summer orientation to help you on your path to the hill that we're talking about tonight. Um, this evening we're here with acing our academics and I will be turning it over to Linda who is our Assistant Dean of Academic Enrichment and Retention. Linda and team, everyone who's here, thank you all so much for being here tonight. Thanks, Jen. Thanks so much for hosting this. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to Acing Your Academics. I am Linda Sokolsky, Assistant Dean of Academic Enrichment and Retention. On your screen are the Academic Enrichment and Retention campus resources available to you. As you look to begin your first semester at Seton Hill, I encourage you to think about habits and behaviors. Creating good habits and behaviors, like using the resources listed here, is an excellent way for you to reach your academic goals. I also encourage you to ignore the myth that says you don't wanna ask for help. This is wrong. Successful college students ask for help and they ask for help often. So without further delay, I'm going to turn it over to the Academic Achievement Center and let them share with you their acing your academic tips. Hi everyone, my name is Meredith Weber. I'm the director for the Academic Achievement Center. Welcome and welcome to Seton Hill. Uh, we're looking forward to going and meeting you. Just a little bit about our this department. Uh, it is focused on helping you with anything related to your academic strategies that you're going to use to be a successful student. So when it's talking about tutoring services, study strategies, academic counseling, this is anything and everything. We're here for you from day one all the way through graduation, and we want to make sure that you are understanding your course syllabi. We want to make sure that you're managing your time management well. You're having successful study strategies for your homework assignments or your test strategies, uh, test anxiety strategies, uh, note-taking strategies, anything and everything related, including talking to your faculty members and making sure that all of your assignments and everything are understood. So that's a little bit of those. In terms of the tutoring services specifically, just to note that it's going to be a shared uh, service through the Math Enrichment Center as well as the Academic Achievement Center. Uh, there is one schedule that you all can go and find on my shoe down at the very bottom of the page if you've already started looking there under Campus Services. So that schedule is going to demonstrate and show you all of the classes that we service with tutoring. This is a peer tutoring program. So any of the classes have been already taken by the students that are assisting you. Uh, they have drop-in sessions, which is a weekly scheduled time slot. You just literally walk into the center, or we also have some of those drop-in sessions that will be available as a virtual option. Uh, the other option is to meet with students and the tutors individually, and you can do that by appointment. Just email them uh, and contact and be able to set up your own designated day and time to meet. So these are just some of the services that we're, we're going to be providing. Please look at that uh, notation and that quote. Uh, success does not come from what you do occasionally. It definitely comes from being consistent and doing something a little bit at least every single day. And we want you to kind of look at that and think about what options, what assignments, what strategies could you be working on? So Linda, if you wanna to go to the next slide, this maybe gives you a little bit to think about. So I love memes, I think they're hilarious and really kind of get to the point for uh, some strategies and tips. With that in mind, we want you to try something new. Trying something new often and see if it works for you. Your study strategies have gotten you this far. So anytime that I'm meeting with a student and trying to work out some new time management tips or study strategies tips, it's with the intention that we're taking what you currently are successful using for strategies and kind of adapting them or tweaking them based on your individual classes. And with that idea, try something new, see what different strategies are available to you. One big thing to kind of think about, when you're in high school, about 80% of the information that you're going to be learning and understanding or practicing with 
is going to be done pretty much in the classroom because you're having classes multiple times a week and the instructor is giving you a lot of information. That's completely different typically with a college course. Only about 20% of the material that you're going to be learning is going to happen in the class, which means there is a lot to do outside of the classroom. And that 80% outside of the class can be different strategies and it can be a mix of that with some of the strategies you've already been successful with. So that's where I say, do something a little bit every single day. It's that consistency with reviewing the information that's going to be really helpful. Next slide. All right, so my last kind of tip for you is I love talking about time management. I work with students all the time, uh, whether it's day one of the semester or right before finals, we're talking about time management and making sure that you have the best schedule for yourself to complete every task. I want you to have free time. Every college student needs to have free time, but how you get to that free time and know that it's going to be a full time off, you cannot have to worry about your academics during that, is to create a plan. Something that's going to help you kind of keep on track, know those due dates. I usually recommend have some kind of a master calendar that will go and give you an overarching look for the semester. You want to know when you're going to be the busiest so that you can kind of prepare for that. And then you're kind of figuring out, okay, I want to prioritize task A for this class and kind of complete that first. And that'll help you nail down and figure out what's happening. Again, my goal for you is to have more free time and to use the study time wisely. Uh, you can go and get a lot done in a small time period if you're creating some kind of a plan of action. And I will turn it over next. I think the Math Enrichment Center is coming up. Hi, everybody. My name is Amy Beninati, and I am the director of the Mathematics Enrichment Center, or MEC for short. The MEC's primary purpose is to assist you with math and math-related coursework during your time here at Seton Hill. <clears throat> um, so the MEC works with students across every field. While we recognize that students enter Seton Hill with different levels of mathematical knowledge, interest, and excitement for math, we also know that every student can be successful in mathematics. The MEC is a place to collaborate, study with your peers, and really just take advantage of a dedicated workspace um, at Seton Hill dedicated to math. We help students recognize that mistakes are a welcome part of the learning process and any struggle is indeed purposeful because it strengthens your problem solving skills across any of your coursework. So please use this resource as much as possible throughout your time here at Seton Hill. You're always welcome to just stop in. The MEC offers a variety of academic services. We are part of the undergraduate tutoring program discussed earlier by the Academic Achievement Center for mathematics courses, statistics, and several other science and business courses. As mentioned, our tutoring is course specific and our tutors have already successfully completed the course. The tutors have the advantage of being familiar with the content, the instructor, and the expectations. Tutoring occurs by appointment and through drop-in sessions. Both will be available this year, and we will kind of follow along the lines of the campus guidelines for this upcoming school year. Schedules are available on my shoe, like the Academic Achievement Center director already told you. So you'll become very familiar with how to find that uh, very quickly. Our peer tutors also hold exam review sessions for most 100 level mathematics courses. They are pretty popular with students, so do take advantage of them. It's a great way to become acclimated to the MEC in a larger group setting. We will also continue to promote facilitated study groups. These small groups of students um, are basically from one course. They meet weekly with a tutor to work on their math collaboratively. And it's the same group that meet weekly and it becomes a regular part of your schedule. Um, Information on tutoring, review sessions, and workshops can always be found on our MEC website, 
along with online resources such as helpful apps, study guides, and general tips. At times, the MEC will also send information through your student email, uh, your Canvas course announcements, which you'll become familiar with as well. That's kind of like your Google Classroom, um, and you might have already heard about it already. Um, the MEC also offers co-requisite workshops, helping students with math, math that they see in their science courses. We also offer field-specific uh, exam prep for if you're studying for your praxis exam, for your teacher certification, or you need to take a math competency exam for nursing. Uh, we can assist you with all of that as well. Finally, the MEC also manages Alex. And I do know that you're all familiar with that because that was part of your onboarding process. I encourage all of you to look back on your Alex Math Placement Assessment and take advantage of those learning modules that were created specifically for you. These modules based on your assessment results are available for an entire year. So even if you aren't taking a math course right now, you can start prepping for spring or even next year. Alex is a great place to work independently to prepare for your future courses. And that's especially important if you came up a little bit underprepared or if you have a long break between your math courses. Please be on the lookout for additional resources related to the Alex placement and improving your score because those will be coming out this fall. You can switch to the next slide. The MEC does provide enrichment opportunities as well. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we had our first integration B. So for those who have taken calculus, um, it's something you'll be able to participate in this fall to board game nights with our writing center team. Uh, we even roll in the popcorn machine for that. So it's kind of fun. Other highlights in past years include mock job interviews, teacher prep workshops, book discussions, and we're planning for a professional panel of what to do with your mathematics degree. Uh, we're pairing with uh, SHU alumni to offer you that this fall. The MEC also partners with a local school district to provide math intervention to middle school students. So if that's something that might interest you, please reach out to me uh, as soon as you can, as soon as you arrive on campus. You do not need to be a math major and you do not need to have any teaching experience. We just want people interested in helping the community around you. So finally, how do you ace your academics when it comes to math? Math is not a spectator sport. You learn math by doing math. If your exams consist of solving problems, then you have to practice solving problems, and a lot of them. In college, uh, instructors often post suggested homework rather than required homework. But to be successful in math, you have to consider it mandatory. So make sure you do those assignments. Reach out early as well. Put tutor drop-in sessions in your calendar. Make it part of your routine. Join a study group for weekly consistency. And always reach out now, like first week, second week, before your first exam. College exams can be quite different from high school work. Um, it usually contains, exams usually cover a lot more material than you're used to. So you wanna work with a tutor early so you know what to expect. Also, do not hesitate to walk through the doors of the MEC anytime. There is no stigma with tutoring or tutors work with students of all levels, math majors to math avoiders. Our tutors use tutoring. It's free and it's friendly. Over, uh, I mean, hundreds of students walk through our doors and we find that our visitors, once they come through, they come back. Um, so, please know that it is going to be a positive experience and it is something you're gonna to wanna to return to again and again. Um, use the space. Studies show math is learned best in a collaborative environment. I've watched many students make connections with their peers in the MEC and have people to work with throughout their entire time at Seton Hill. But you can also use it to study on your own in between classes. So again, feel free to walk in anytime. And my last little piece is just always read your Canvas announcements. Um, we always post review sessions, updated tutoring sessions through Canvas, at least the MEC does. 
because um, I'm part of those classes as well, because um, I can provide content support as needed for some of your 100 level courses. Basically, if you don't know where to begin, just come in and talk to me. Students are always welcome to stop in. I can provide you content support, but more importantly, I can help you connect with a tutor, walk you through your resources, and familiarize, familiarize you with all the MEC does. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to the Writing Center. Thanks, Amy. Um, my name is Kim Panese. I'm director of the Writing Center, and I'm going to talk with you a bit about the Writing Center, and then I'll turn it over to um, Beth, who is our assistant director. Um, most of you, well, all of you should be visiting us with your first year writing classes, uh, your composition and culture class uh, within the first month or so of the semester. But I did want to touch base with you here, too, and tell you a little bit about our services. Um, we like this quote that we're not here because people can't write. We're here because they do. Um, and we're here to help you develop those writing skills. Um, so why is writing important? Linda, the next slide, please. Okay, thank you. Um, writing is an important skill, not just in college and in school, but also in the workplace. You hear all the time, there's a quote here from the National Commission on Writing about the amount of writing that, that employees do. I had a conversation a couple uh, last week with one of our business instructors who also works in the corporate world and he talks about how much writing and how important writing is. I had a lengthy conversation with him. So I think just remembering that regardless of what field you're going into, that writing is important. It's a way to communicate your ideas. And I think particularly now there's so much more communication done through emails and through um, you know, written text. You don't pick up the phone, you don't sit and meet with somebody all the time, even though we do a lot more of that through Zoom than we used to. Um, I think there's still a lot of written um, reports that you have to do in things. So we want you to develop your writing skills. And at Seton Hill, you will be doing that. You take a writing course your first year, plus you take at least one writing intensive course in your major, which um, you'll learn a lot more about writing in your particular discipline. So you will do the writing that's specific for your field. So if you're in education, you might be doing a parent handbook or an IEP. Um, certainly in business, you're doing memos, things like that. So there's a lot of different types of writing that you might not be familiar with. And that's why we can help you develop those kinds of writing too. I think the other thing too, that as you shift from high school to college and beyond, the types of writing you're doing is very different. So you're not just doing a, something for your teacher. You start talking about authentic writing uh, tasks that are for different audiences. Um, you're writing for parents, you're writing for colleagues, you're writing for um, patients or employees or you know all different types of, of audiences. So you have to think about those kind of things. And you go beyond things like the five paragraph essay. You might write a literature review or a um, financial statement analysis. There's so many different types of writing that you might not be familiar, familiar with, and that's where we can help you with those kind of things. Um, next slide, please. Um, so what we can do to help with that is work with you at any stage of the writing process. A lot of times those different types of assignments you might get, you'll be like, I don't even know where to get started on this. So feel free to come into the writing center and work on brainstorming or you know, thinking about how you might organize your ideas or you know, all the way up through that kind of final polishing um, aspect of the writing. You know, but don't think you have to have something written to come into the writing center. We work with all different types of writers. Um, we do work with first years, but we also work with graduate students and faculty members. I think just having somebody objective look at your writing and give you feedback is always useful. Um, we do, as I mentioned too, about writing and all the different disciplines. We, we work on writing, we work on lab reports, we work on science writing, we work on um, any field you can come in. So don't think it has to be just for your writing classes or even just your writing intensive classes. There's a lot of writing that occurs that aren't in those writing intensive classes. And as I you know, said already, we talk, we'll talk about the different types of composition. So that can be anything from Again, lab reports, emails, memos, we've got blog statement, blog, blog posts. Um, and we can also do things like multimodal compositions. You guys will all be doing that in your first year writing class, some kind of multimodal composition. Now we don't do the technical part, like how do you edit a video or things like that? 
but some of the things that happen in videos or websites or um, portfolios that are um, include images and audio and, and that kind of thing overlap with the written text. So we can talk about, again, is it appropriate for your audience? Is it the right tone? You know, is it organized well? So we can work on all those different types of compositions. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to Beth, who is going to talk a little bit more about how we can talk about these different things. Thanks, Kim. Um, this is a little more of the nuts and bolts of how we help. Our main service is individualized collaborative sessions, and we do offer those both online and face-to-face. -face. Um, most often, these are one-on-one, -on -one, although if you are assigned a group project, you may come in with your group. Um, and when students come in, they have the chance to identify what they want to work on and prioritize the things they want to look at in the session. Um, and during the session, the consultant will help the student with strategies for developing their writing. Um, we'll talk a lot more about how this happens in those introductory visits that Kim mentioned. Another thing we do is workshops on common issues. Um, there is a workshop specifically for first year students called Write On. It's a workshop series. Again, we'll talk more about that when you visit with your composition and culture class. Um, you may also see our Writing Center staff in some of your classes. Um, we do workshops in class across the curriculum and collaborate with instructors so that we are working with you in class on one of your current assignments. Um, we also have online resources. You'll be able to access our website from my shoe under campus services. Um, and there's all kinds of uh, resources there on writing in different majors and classes and disciplines and on the writing process um, and even on um, grammar and other things. Um, you can also find out a lot about the Writing Center by following us on Instagram. Um, we can go to the next slide and I'll tell you a little bit more about who we are. So you've met Kim, you've met me, um, but in the fall you'll have a chance to meet our staff of student writing consultants. They are the primary folks that work with students when they come in for appointments. And um, I can speak for all of us when we say as the whole team, our goal is to encourage students as they develop their writing. Um, so we are here for you. Um, we will, Kim and I will be here at the end of the presentation if you have questions, um, but if you think of something later that you'd like to ask, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we have next up is going to be Connie Kugel. She'll speak about TRIO SSS Opportunity Program and CAPS. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. I appreciate that. Um, as, as Beth said, my name is Connie Kubel. I'm the director of the TRIO Student Support Services and Opportunity Programs, and I'm also going to be talking about CAPS. Um, if you turn to the next one, uh, Linda, that would be great. So the first um, I'm going to be talking tonight about the TRIO Student Support Services Program. Um, I'm sure you're, if you're not familiar with as far as uh, the SSS program, I wanted to give you just a, a little general information about it. So it is a federally funded program from the Department of Education in Washington, D.C., and it all started um, with three pr programs during the, the War on Poverty by uh, President Lyndon B. Johnson to try to go and give access and opportunity to higher education for all U.S. citizens. Um, it is a program that is trying to assist from enrollment to graduation um, as far as academic and personal support. And through that process, we provide each and every student who is accepted into the, the SSS program, a personal academic coach, where you meet several times throughout the year at key points in order to be able to go and to make sure that you're staying on track, that you're, if you are struggling with anything, that we are getting you aligned with as far as the different services, on this, 
this particular um, you know, session or as far as across the campus in order for you to be able to go into, um, you know, to be successful. You know, we want you to be a success here at Seton Hill. And, you know, if you are struggling, we want you to be able to feel comfortable to come to your academic coach or the staff across the campus to be able to get that help that you need. Um, and again, you know, we're also here to go, not only go to help you during the hard times, but to be able to go and to be the person to come to and to tell us about your successes. We love to hear about those successes and everything. And, and that's what we want to do is to, to be able to go and to um, honor your achievements throughout your time here at Seton Hill. One of the, um, the main things that we have as far as for our program is we have a bunch of different benefits that students can take advantage of as a participant. And one of the main ones is, is that we do have a lending library. Um, and students can uh, take out as far as a book um, if, if we have it uh, to be able to use and you know for as far as their use throughout the semester. Um, you know, you just have to go and basically uh, provide as far as the titles of the books that you might be using to see whether or not if we have it um, within our library in order for you to be able to go and to sign it out and to use it throughout the, the time that you have for the semester. Um, you must be in good standing with the program um, and also be an active participant to take advantage of that particular um, benefit. Um, we also do have some, uh, some small funds from our grant to be able to provide some financial assistance with students um, that are Pell eligible and, and to be able to go and to um, help them to bring down balances, um, you know, uh, to, to, to make sure that they're able to register for the next semester. So again, um, with that, you, again, you have to be Pell eligible and we're, we wanna go and to try to go and to help and help those that are in need. Um, there are specific criteria that you must be met to be a part of the program. Um, and I, I just want to go into say anybody that's on this session tonight or might be going and viewing this at a later date and time, um, my, my contact information and email will be as far as uh, in one of the last screens uh, of the presentation tonight. And I just want you to go into full free to go and to reach out to me and ask me um, any other questions that you might have, or as far as to go and to um, ask for as far as an application. Um, you know, please make sure that, you know, that you take advantage of all the different services that are across campus, and we welcome as far as students to make application to the program. The next um, program that I would like to speak on to this evening on the next slide is the opportunity program. Um, the opportunity program is an admissions decision that the students is mandated to attend a week long program and a two credit course. Um, they, those students must obtain a C or better to start with the freshman class the following week. Um, wanting to see that they are capable of performing at a college level is the real rationale as far as why students have been accepted into the university through the opportunity program. Uh, the dates for as far as this year would be as far as uh, students will be moving in on August the 15th and the program will go through Thursday the 19th. Um, assistance, this is a, a program that's for helping and assisting with the transition from high school to college life. Um, we also are trying to serve uh, the students in, in maximizing and enhancing academic potential. Um, one of the things that we really are, are fortunate is that, you know, all the students receive their technology and training before other freshmen come onto campus. They receive assistance and support throughout their freshman year, again, by an academic coach. Um, they also are assigned a peer mentor that they meet with and have monthly events and meetings with um, in order to make sure that, you know, you, they have a go-to person that is a peer um, that they feel confident that they can, they can go and build a relationship with and to have as a, a behind, you know, have in their corner and to help them throughout either good or bad times. Um, so we also have, as far as you know, the, again, the student success team, um, many of the people on this session tonight act as academic coaches, along with other, other um, staff members across campus that um, hold other positions within the university. 
Um, it is also a time for familiarizing themselves with the campus, um, what a course schedule will be. And also the great thing about this whole thing about opportunity program is that there is no cost and it is free of charge. So you they do not have to go in to pay for any type of room and board during that week. And again, I just wanna go and stress again that this is as far as um, based on an admissions acceptance. Um, and so therefore, if you have not been accepted through opportunity program, you are not able to um, participate. Uh, the next program uh, and you know, uh, program that I would like to go into um, address is called CAPS, the Collegiate Academic and Personal Success, which is on the next screen. Um, that is an admissions acceptance. Um, your acceptance letter is expressed that you have been accepted through the Collegiate Academic and Personal Success. Um, these individuals who are, uh, uh, as far as uh, seen as CAP students, receive academic enrichment and supportive services. Um, they are also receive an academic coach that they'll be meeting with throughout the semester and time here at Seton Hill. Um, and they are also required to take uh, SGS 105, Mastering College Ac Academics 1, which is a one credit course in the fall 2000 and 21 semester. So again, we're here to go in to provide that supportive services and also to provide academic enrichment throughout your time here at Seton Hill. And at this time, uh, I believe that we're going to be going and bringing it up to a question and answer session. Um, and so I'll take it back to Linda and to Jen. Great, thanks Connie and thanks everyone for sharing great information. Um, hopefully you now see we've got you covered. You can ace your academics with all of these great resources on campus. Um, I'm gonna leave this slide up, Jen, if that's okay, because it does have contact information for the folks that presented tonight. If you've got your phone handy, maybe you wanna take a picture of this slide. Um, and we are certainly open and available for questions if you have any. If you do have any questions, you're more than welcome to put them in the chat, or if you'd like to unmute yourself, you can share those questions verbally as well. Any questions from our audience tonight? All right, well, we'll let you have a moment to think of some questions, but kind of to wrap us up, um, what we'll do is we'll go through some of our upcoming virtual orientation events. As I said at the beginning, we are on event number 24 and we have 20 in total. So we have a few more virtual orientation events that you would be able to join us for. So this week on Thursday, August 5th at 6 p.m., we have our campus spotlight tour. This is a virtual tour of campus that's gonna cover many of the important and high traffic locations on Seen Hills campus. Spaces used for socializing, studying, fitness, dining, and more are gonna be covered in the session. So you definitely don't wanna miss that. On Monday, August 9th at 6 p.m., we have our final Griffin gathering, and this is a time for incoming Griffins to socialize and meet with the rest of their incoming classmates. The Zoom event is kind of like online speed dating style conversations, where you'll be able to make brief connections with multiple students within the hour as well as bounce in and out of breakout rooms for different activities that we do. So we hope you can join us next Monday. And our last virtual orientation event is gonna be Tuesday, August 10th at 6 p.m. And this is called Preparing for the Next Steps. While it's the last session of virtual orientation, we're gonna discuss how to prepare for move-in, welcome weekend, and your first week of classes. Um, before I turn the recording off, any other questions that we wanna ask? All right, well, I wanna thank all of our presenters tonight for everything that they did. They did a fabulous job highlighting so many of our academic resources. And hopefully you all see tonight that we really are here to help you throughout your academic journey here at Seton Hill. So with that being said, I'm gonna turn off the recording.